All right, welcome. Um, raise your hand if it's your first time. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Um, just a little rundown of how this works. We have two different companies that present. They present for about six minutes, and then we throw it over to our experts for some questions, and then open it up to you guys for some questions. So if you have a question, just go ahead and raise your hand, and we'll bring a mic over to you. If you can do me a favor and take out your phone, we have a One Million Cups app that we'd like you to download and check in. That way you can provide feedback on the app, and it goes directly <laughs> to, to the presenters, which I'm sure they appreciate. And... My name's Caitlin, I'm one of the community organizers. This is John, Kyle, Tyler's in the back. We're missing a couple of us today. Everyone else is home or on vacation. Somewhere warmer, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna throw it over to our expert and have her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Shanita Bryant. I am the owner and operator of Magnolias on the Move. We are a full service catering business and food truck. And this is my first time too. So. Awesome. Thank you for being here. All right. Good. All right. Please help me welcome our first presenter, Hakima with Uzazi Village. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, Uzazi Village is a nonprofit organization uh, founded in 2012. We work to bridge the gap in maternal infant outcomes in the African American uh, community or black and brown communities because there is a difference. African American women are about four to 12 times more likely, depending on where you are in the country, uh, to die during the year after they give birth. Uh, and black babies are twice as likely to die during their first year of life. So these disparities have been around uh, for generations. I first discovered them as a new labor and delivery nurse uh, working here. I was born in here in Kansas City, Missouri. I've lived here my whole life. and. Uh, started my career as a nurse, uh, working labor and delivery, and saw the stark difference in the quality of care that black and brown families often received. Uh, that disparity that results in these kinds of outcomes. Again, these outcomes have been around generationally. They are not new uh, for at least 60 or 70 years. What is new is that right now, today, these statistics are actually getting worse. The maternal and infant death rates in black and brown communities are actually on the rise for the first time in decades. So our, our mission is simple. We center black and brown families in maternal infant health, and our vision is for every family a healthy baby and for every baby a healthy village. So who do we serve? We really serve three very distinct audiences. We, of course, serve childbearing and childrearing families in our communities here in the metropolitan Kansas City area. But we also serve the health care and social service providers that serve those families. Uh, mainly, we do training related to improving quality of care for black and brown families through anti-racism and anti-oppression training because we know that uh, implicit bias sneaks its way into health care, just as it does in every strata of social life in the U.S. And so we work with institutions, organizations, agencies to provide, uh, to make improvements on their uh, culturally congruent care. And then finally, we serve what we call candidates of color, uh, and that is an an effort on our part to uh, diversify the perinatal fields, uh, which are largely dominated by uh, dominant culture folks. So our solution to the problem of perinatal health disparities, perinatal is that childbearing year, prenatal 
labor and delivery, postpartum, all that together is perinatal. Uh, we seek to disrupt those inequities in health outcomes through Afrocentric clinical care models and health promotions. Uh, I'll talk to you about what that means in just a sec. Anti-racism and anti-oppression training and advocacy and career coaching. So you can see in our solutions, we're talking about each of the three audiences uh, that we just mentioned that we're trying to reach. So our Afrocentric uh, clinical care models uh, involve the creation of how to care for people in a way that best serves their health beliefs and cultural needs. So we are, we do that in a multitude of ways. We have all kinds of childbirth classes, breastfeeding classes, baby wearing classes, infant care classes, all kinds of classes that are geared to what I call black ways of being. So we put those health messages out there, because I'm still a nurse, so health messages are, are important, but we frame those messages in a way uh, that the audience they're directed to can receive them. Our career coaching, we provide lots and lots of training to folks who want to enter these fields, folks who want to be physicians, nurses, midwives, doulas, lactation consultants, all of those fields uh, that interface with the maternity care system, uh, and we're working to draw more black and brown faces into those fields. So some of our programs, all of these photos, by the way, are from our, our, our clients. Uh, so every year, this is one of my favorites, every year, the last week of August is Black Breastfeeding Week, and we always our breastfeeding families because images out there in the public of black breastfeeding mothers are so rare and so we are matters uh, and so these images uh, that I'm showing are some of our families that we serve so we have a sister doula program which is a community-based doula program for those who don't know what a doula is it is a professional labor support person our sister doula program very inclusive. All of our sister doulas are women from the community serving the communities they live in. They are also trained as community health workers, breastfeeding peer counselors, and sexual health and reproduction counselors so that they have a full scope uh, of education from which to serve their, their clients. Our sister doula program is reimbursed by the Medicaid managed care organizations that uh, have the contracts with the state of Missouri. So we're not paid directly by Medicaid, we're paid by the insurance companies that contract with Medicaid. They pay our sister doulas to work with their clients to navigate them to, through their pregnancies and their postpartum periods in order to have uh, improved health outcomes. Uh, we have a clothing uh, closet and diaper closet where uh, that's open to the public. Uh, we give out diapers and, and baby clothes. We have a breastfeeding clinic staffed by lactation consultants that uh, sees members of the community free of charge. Uh, we're involved in research projects. We are researchers. We are educators. Uh, we offer internships and mentorships. So we work with several of the universities right now, I think, this semester we have a student from UMKC and one from uh, Nazarene, uh, but our interns have come from other states as well. Uh, and then we offer workshops and training. So we do, we try to disrupt those factors that are the underlying cause of health disparities at many different levels. So our next steps, uh, we're currently in the process of building a clinic. The Ida Mae Patterson Clinic uh, will open this summer at our current location at 4232 Troost, which is uh, throw from here, you can throw a rock and hit it. And uh, we'll be opening our clinic. Uh, it is based on Afrocentric principles of care and 
in the clinic, we'll be utilizing the Village Circle model, which is a model of care I've created specifically to uh, appeal to women of color uh, and its approach to health care uh, that uh, creates trust uh, between a partnership between care receiver and care provider. Uh, we'll also be opening the Uzazi Institute of Midwifery. Uh, that is a midwifery school that is in the works uh, about two years out. And then finally, the Community Birth House, which will be a birth center, uh, an out-of-hospital birth center, uh, freestanding birth center, uh, where families can have their babies that will be, of course, midwifery-driven. So these are all midwifery-driven models. And finally, there is my contact information. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. What are your questions? We will start over here with a question from the expert panel. OK, this is all amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so do you have your contact information here, but you didn't provide us with information. How can we support um, the either the Midwifery Center or the Community Birthing Center or some of these initiatives that you have um, coming down the pipeline later on? So uh, thank you for that question. We uh, love uh, your support in the form of donations, of course, but we also need volunteers. Uh, Uzazi Village has a brain trust of uh, national professionals throughout the country who work with us as we're designing our, our care models. Uh, we have researchers, sci scientists, bioethicists, educators, uh, and clinicians, of course, all kinds of folks uh, who work with us in our brain trust to refine or our ideas because we are setting out to change healthcare. We're, we're, know that the current model does not work for our community and we're trying to create models that do. Uh, and so we appreciate uh, those experts who want to join our brain trust and we also have volunteers who of course just help us to run day-to-day -day business. We have a whole slew of volunteers who run our closet. Uh, we always get a ton of donations of diapers and clothing that all have to be sorted and folded and hung up in the closet, so we uh, probably most of our volunteers who are physically here in Kansas City uh, work within our closet. Uh, we're always looking for folks who want to partake of our training, whether they run institutions or agencies or, or whether they're individuals who like way into these professions. Always looking for those folks. And of, co of course, we're very dependent on local agencies driving families to our door. So uh, referrals are very important to us. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I have an idea from what you talked about, about the problem you are addressing and how you're going about that. Can you give me a better idea of your business model? You mentioned you're a nonprofit, um, but what actually goes into making it run? Our business model, I would say we're social entrepreneurs that we're ultimately attempting uh, disrupt a dynamic that is dis dis disruptive to our community, and we're trying to replace it with, with something that's culturally congruent and something that works for our community. So we're, we're out to make a difference uh, while we're out to make a profit in order to that back into the work and into the So building on that, how do you take the knowledge and the approaches that you have and take it outside of your doors? How does it become something that can be effective on a system-wide <laughs> level? Uh, we are very uh, thoughtful about impacting systems. Systems is where we see the change need to, needs to happen. And so we do that in a lot of ways. We participate, my team and I, my executive team and I participate in a lot of conferences around the country. Uh, so we speak 
nationwide on health disparities in African American communities. We are experts on that topic. Uh, we do the research. We're actively involved in IRB approved research right now. We will be always. And when we get our findings, we publish our findings. So we're planning on publishing our findings in peer reviewed journals so that other professionals and other communities around the country can see what we're doing and, and the kinds of successes that we're having. Uh, our ultimate goal is to replicate our models. We have the sister doula model that we also want to, that we want to replicate, but we also have other models. We have Chocolate Milk Cafe, which is a breastfeeding support, peer-to-peer -peer support model for African American women. We're already replicating that around the country. We have Chocolate Milk Cafes in New Jersey and Rhode Island and uh, in Oklahoma City. So we're, we're starting to replicate our models even while we're still in the midst of this. Okay, I have one more question. Um, Mama Four uh, didn't know anything about this <laughs> at all. Um, so how do you, I know you said that you get community referrals, but how do you um, encourage or get information out to other moms because, I mean, I only knew about the traditional way, which is what I did all four times. So this is a, a right. different way, a different thought pattern. Right, what it is a, a new dynamic, uh, and uh, that, that's a great question because that's, uh, we're always looking for ways to, to expand how we get uh, the word out into the community. And this is a, a new care model. It's midwifery driven. I'm a midwife student myself. I hope to finish my midwifery studies by the end of the year uh, and be certified. I'm also a lactation consultant, a perinatal nurse, uh, a nurse educator. I teach for UMKC and, um, but I firmly believe that the environment that a woman gives birth in and who she chooses as her care providers has a huge impact on her health outcomes. So I'm very devoted to the midwifery and model of care and seeing that more women across the board know about this, this option for care. Uh, and so we mostly partner with other community institutions and agencies to let their folks know that we exist folks come to us for education or they come to our clothing closet or they come to get a pack of diapers and then they, they find out about everything. Uh, we let them know that, uh, that there are other care models, that there are other care options available that might better suit uh, their, their goals for their childbearing experience. Excellent, we're gonna turn it over to you guys for questions, so please get those hands up and we will start here in the center. Great presentation. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. Um, how do you how do you recruit your interns? Are you connected to the local um, universities? We are. We 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 communicate with uh, uh, the various programs because we do take interns from all disciplines. It's not just nursing, not just medicine. We love it when we get someone who's studying medical anthropology or someone who's studying public health or someone who's uh, studying any number of things that are still related to perinatal health, but they don't have to be uh, clinically oriented. Uh, so yes, we do communicate with all the local universities, but as I said, we've had interns come from out of state, so word about us trickle out because we do offer a very unique experience. We are exclusive health focused uh, and uh, we focus on it's very hard to duplicate that uh, that kind of experience if that happens to be what someone is more than enough applications to select you spoke briefly about how people get to know about your services can you tell us more about your marketing plan in general so our marketing plan. So we use social media very heavily. Uh, a lot of the younger generation who are the childbearing age women uh, really congregate on social media. Uh, that's where we find them. Uh, when, even when it's difficult to get them to gather in person, uh, about 
uh, congregating on social media, there, uh, finding their cultural groups there, getting information into your uh, settings online. Uh, so we go online and, and, and capture them there. There are a lot of uh, mom to mom groups, a lot of breastfeeding groups, and uh, a lot of clinician groups that are African American, American specific. Uh, so uh, those are groups that I can get into, that we can dialogue about our services, let people know what we're doing. I have my own. Uh, Facebook page. I post a daily question, question of the day, so I have a huge national following who logs on to my page every day to ask me the question of the day and to participate in that dialogue that's centered around healthcare and racism. Question here on your right. More, <clears throat> excuse me. Good morning. Great presentation. My question is: You mentioned that you have classes that are available. Are those classes only for staff or are the classes for the community as well? And if so, can we access it through your website? You absolutely can access everything we do th through our website, which is posted here. Uh, so we have different classes for different categories of folks. Remember, we're reaching out to those audiences. So all the classes that we offer to community families are free, the childbirth class, the breastfeeding class, the newborn care class. All those classes are free and available to the public, and we do have the classes and the training that we offer to candidates of color uh, are different classes. So those are for aspiring professionals. Uh, they usually have a cost associated with them, and the training and the consulting work that we do for institutions. We have a question in the middle. Good morning. Good morning. Great presentation. Uh, my question pertains to uh, regards to keeping your your model in in reference to the traditional healthcare model um, in regards to the ever changing healthcare landscape. Uh, so, how do you, uh, or your guys as an organization, how does it keep to um, keeping their own way or to your own way in part to what is the ever-changing healthcare landscape and how new procedures and guidelines that are being implemented every day? Well, certainly we have to pay attention to that. We have to pay attention to what's going on systemically in uh, traditional healthcare settings. We have to pay attention to that, but we also strategically analyze what's working and what's not working for our community. We know that African-American babies uh, are most likely to succumb to prematurity and by birth weight, and so we have to look at uh, how those outcomes are impacted uh, as African-American women or pregnant individuals move through the healthcare system. How are their needs met and not met, and how that impacts the outcomes of their infants and for, for those pregnant persons as well. So we're paying attention also, we're paying attention to what is, but we're also hearkening back to our roots and our traditions and our ancestral knowledge and ancestral ways of being, uh, and we draw from that as we create new models that are able to interface. So as we build the Ida Mae Patterson Clinic, uh, our clients will get nurturing, supported prenatal care there that is culturally specific, but they're still going to go out and give birth at the local hospital. So we. Uh, Partnership may be too strong a word, but we certainly collaborate with the local hospitals and say, this is what we're doing here. Our clients are still going to give birth there. They'll hopefully be accompanied by a sister doula, advocate slash navigator person with them to companion them through the healthcare experience when they're on the hospital side. But we uh, fully expect to work with our local hospitals to work with the existing institutions. as folks move uh, out of our organization into other Question here in the center. So I have a related question. Are you able to track the outcomes of the patients, not only the ones that you see within your own clinic, but those that are um, being touched by the training of your collabor collaborative clinics? 
Well, it's certainly our intent to do so. So we work with Maternity Neighborhood, who is designing uh, electronic health records specifically for us. In fact, we're helping them help us. Uh, they have gifted us an EHR in perpetuity in exchange for, you know, us developing whatever we need them what they need to know to meet needs in the future. So we work with maternity neighborhoods on our own uh, customized electronic health records so that we can track those very outcomes that, yeah, we count every damn thing. Tracking our outcomes. Um, Hakima, I believe, sorry, on your right, there is a new uh, co-working opportunity that started recently at the Uzazi Village Eastside Collaborative. Sorry to put you on the spot a little bit, but can oh, you tell no. us some about that? I'd love to talk about that. So Uzazi Village, we have a beautiful facility, and uh, we use, uh, our facility is used by the community, and one of the community entities that uses our facility every Tuesday, because Uzazi Village isn't open on Tuesdays, uh, so uh, our space is rented by the Eastside Collaborative, which is a black uh, co-working group. So black entrepreneurs come together in our space uh, together to collaborate uh, and to use our facility. So our, our space is used by a lot of groups for a lot of different things. We also host the black homeschoolers uh, every Thursday afternoon. Uh, we have community-sponsored craft circles that teach knitting and crocheting. We have uh, sewing classes offered by a community women, woman. We have prenatal yoga. We have Tai Chi. We have jujitsu. Lots of folks use our, our space uh, to host classes that enrich community life, village life. All right, Akima, last question. What can we as a community do to help you? <laughs> you can uh, log on our website, check us out, check us out on Facebook, uh, donate and volunteer. Come talk to me, ask us about what we can do and how you can be of service. We probably need your skill and expertise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a few announcements from the community. We will start with Caitlin. Uh, I just wanted to say there's a opportunity for an event tonight um, that should be fun. It's at Hotel Phillips. Uh, they have a speakeasy in the basement called PS, and they have this series going called Cocktails and Conversation. It's kind of like this, but with alcohol and one <laughs> and one featured speaker. And tonight it is Sean Edwards and Russ Sim Sim Simmons, and you'd probably recognize them. They're on Fox all the time. They're the movie critics that are always... Um, interviewing the celebrities and stuff, and they're going to be focusing their conversation on the blow-up of Black Panther and breaking records and the record boxes and everything. But that's tonight at 7, $10 for a ticket, but it includes a drink. Hotel Phillips, P.S. Next up, John Kohler to tell us about Startup Weekend. Good morning. So we're about one month out from uh, Kansas City's 14th Startup Weekend. Um, we're hosting it at the Sprint Accelerator, and we have a really neat opportunity, thanks to Grow With Google, um, where all the uh, attendees can get in for free. Um, so basically, developers, designers, and non-technical people get together for 48 hours, Friday evening through Sunday evening, uh, pitch ideas, get teams together, uh, and get judged on presentations at the end of the week, but weekend. But um, if you have any questions, uh, come see me after one million cups. Thanks. And one more, Clarissa Knighton, to tell us about Gilded, an awesome opportunity to hear from artists, entrepreneurs in the Kansas City area. Good morning, One Million Cups. I'm Clarissa Knighton, and I own Rissa's Artistic Design. Tomorrow, tomorrow, at the Kemper Museum, 4420 Warwick, at 12 noon, myself, I will be speaking, the, I'm first up, <laughs> and then Dr. Um, Adrian Horde from UMKC will be speaking as well. And again, as Kyle said, Gildit is G U I L D I T dot org. It's an organization spin off from One Million Cups 
and two presenters, same format as today, will be speak speaking, but we're just all artists. Thank you. And you can find Gilded on Twitter, at Go Gilded. Uh, we also hope you will join us here at One Million Cups next week for the final day of our Black History Month celebration. We will have our usual One Million Cups in the morning and an extra special event that evening, which will feature another presentation, an alumni panel, and a Black-owned small business fair. So please, next Wednesday, the 28th, from 6 to 8 p.m., right here at the Kauffman Foundation. Please join us. All right, one more thing. Let's do Mug Club. Can you please raise your hand if you have been to One Million Cups 10 or more times? Put your hand down if you already have a mug. Everyone already have a mug? Oh, I see one over there. Do you see it? Yep. <laughs> All right, if you could tell us why you come to One Million Cups and introduce yourself. Oh, sure. Well, my name's Tom Moore, and I come to One Million Cups to... Uh, just keep in touch with what's going on with people, creative people, you know, people thinking differently and connecting differently. So that's why I come. Oh, and I'm in the chemical distribution business. Awesome. Thank you for being here. And one more quick thing. Um, our second expert panelist, Ezzy Redwood, showed up. I'm going to let him introduce himself real quick. Cool. All right. Hi, my name is Ezzy Redwood, uh, partner at Wings Cafe, uh, co-founder of uh, 2030 CEO. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're all about building entrepreneurship in the ecosystem in Kansas City. So uh, look out for our events. Our, um, we'll have some um, uh, slips with uh, the link for our next event, which also happens next week on the uh, counter. And that's how uh, Chad Trout Wine uh, built a $100 million company. So thanks. All right, thank you, sir. Without further ado, let's have a very warm welcome for our second presenter, Abdul Yahaya with Local Legends Gaming. Are your kids tired of the same old parties? Well, Local Legends brings the ultimate party right to you. Whether it's a competitive tournament or a private party, it's fun for all ages. We've got plenty of room in our 24-foot-long, climate-controlled, custom stadium seating game truck. With all of the latest and greatest consoles and games on 4K HDR TVs, it's guaranteed to make your party the greatest party yet. Don't settle for another boring party. Let local legends be a party at your house, but not in your house. <laughs> so short. <laughs> We're Rhett and Link, and we wanted to show you how we created our amazing new website with Wix. Now, we know that having a great website is... Hey, everyone. Once again, my name is Abdul Rashid Yahaya. I'm one of the owner and operators of Local Legend Gaming. The other owner is actually my wife. Uh, she's a lot more important than me, so she's at work right now. Um, and also pictured is two and a half of our kids, um, my oldest son, Anthony Amori, and my daughter, Zaria Ray. Um, we're actually expecting our third child in a month from now, uh, and, and another reason why my wife isn't here with me today. Um, but Local Legend Gaming is a mobile, <clears throat> a mobile gaming uh, theater. We do everything from private parties to competitive gaming events. Um, the trailer is actually a 24-foot enclosed climate control to self power gaming trailer fashion with the latest and greatest in consoles from Xbox One X, PlayStation Pro, Nintendo Switch, and also the retro consoles made fresh like the SNES Classic and the, and the NES Classic. So what we tend to is one of the biggest issues in gaming, which is this imagery here. Uh, video games have come a very far away over the last 20 years. But this hasn't changed where you buy this phenomenal game, but you end up playing by yourself. Even with the advances in, inter in internet speeds and being able to connect anywhere in the nation, um, gaming is still better together. So we're trying to get away from this imagery. So we actually encourage couch co-op style gameplay 
where two or more individuals sit on a couch and enjoy a game together. And you think back to the time where we used to play like Mario Kart or we play like Super Smash Brothers with our friends, and you have an opportunity to like high five them when, when you do something great or even laugh in the face of someone you beat. It's that kind of camaraderie we're trying to bring back because that's what truly makes the experience of these video games phenomenal. This is actually a photo from our grand opening. We just uh, opened our company on, uh, we, we announced a sem September 12th, which is National Video Game Day, and had our grand opening on September 23rd uh, at Municipal Auditorium. Once again, gaming is better together. We don't have an age limit or demographic for our actual patrons um, because everyone enjoys th these type of things, whether it's a mobile device, a handheld device, or a console or a PC. Um, Gaming is still a, a phenomenal experience that should be shared and shouldn't just be kept to ourselves. This is actually the construction of our, of our game truck from when we first acquired the trailer to the conception. The idea was to provide a premium gaming environment that anyone can experience, whether you come from a economically struggling community or you come from a well-off background. We, uh, wanted to appeal to the mass and give everyone that, uh, that great gaming experience. So we went with the best quality of materials that we could as well as the, the greatest devices that we could get our hands on so that everyone gets to experience that phenomenal gaming experience that we all deserve. What makes us unique is we don't have an anchor. Um, if, you live in Lee, if you live in anywhere in the greater Kansas City area, we can bring this experience to you, whether you're in Lee Summit, South Kansas City, Grandview, Belton, North Kansas City, KC Mills, South KC, Olathe, Lenexa. We can come anywhere to you because we don't have an anchor. We can, we can go anywhere that's semi-level um, and allows us to hit our brakes on our truck and, and drop an anchor. Um, we're, since we're self-powered and climate controlled, we operate year-round. We have air conditioners and coolers inside the, uh, sorry, air conditioner and heaters inside the gaming truck. Um, as well as surround sound systems so that we can actually bring this gaming experience as well as the party right to your doorstep. Some of the events that we, that we have, we have an event that's tailored towards high school students where we actually allow them to take over our business and allow them to run their own video game tournament. We show them how to market the event, run the day of the event, collect tickets, choose the game, run the brackets so that high school students actually have the opportunity to see what entrepreneurship and business uh, and business owning feels like without having the risk of a failing business and going in debt. Um, we allow them to, if they do well, pocket all their proceeds, and if they do bad, they don't go in debt um, like I would if the business model failed. We also have an event called Legends of the, of the Dorm where we take our game truck to college campuses. All college campuses have a campus square a student union where we pull up right in the middle of campus and we, and we run a series of gaming events um, to encourage students to come out of their dorm rooms, come back to campus and enjoy the camaraderie and the good, the good time of gaming with individuals who they wouldn't regularly cross paths with uh, on a college campus. We also run large gaming events. Um, this, this past fall we ran a uh, Pro vs. Joe's uh, tournament that was hosted by Eric Berry from the Chiefs. He's currently the number one Madden player in the nation. Every year, the, NF the ESPN and the NFL runs a Madden tournament across with the professionals, and he's won the past two years. So we actually came out and hosted it and shook hands and met the individuals. He didn't play. Madden is a big emotional sport, and he, I don't think he really wanted to put his, uh, his self-esteem at risk, but he did come out and actually enjoy the uh, community. And once again, our contact information, if anyone wants to so know how to find us, we're on all major social media platforms from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Discord. And uh, once again, my name is Abdul Rashid Jahaya. Um, I'd love to take you guys' questions. Wow. <laughs> OK. So I took your information down. I have a 16-year-old. We're having a party. We'll talk about it later. Perfect. Um, I I had no idea. So again, the same as with that. How are you marketing this? Because um, I am a part of like the food truck community, and that's not just food. There are other trucks, and so it would be nice if I could see you looped into that network because those food truck events where people are eating food are also potential customers for right. you. They have children, they have businesses, they throw parties. 
So. so we have a few different ways that we market. Um, the biggest thing is going to be paid advertisements with Facebook and Instagram. When we do our community facing events, we're going to be starting a community facing event called First Friday Frenzy starting in April, where it's actually going to be a free play event. Where we'll park down in the uh, in, down with First Fridays, and everyone will be able to come out and play. And all we'll charge you is to like us on Facebook and share a selfie with our logo next to our truck and check in where you're at. So let people know, hey, we're having a good time here. Come and join us as well as events like Food Truck Frenzy that happen like in, in Lenexa, Kansas. Um, we do plan to actually attend those when the weather gets better. Um, like the event that you saw with Eric Berry, we actually, when we do community facing events, we actually reach out to food trucks and have them park in front and behind us, so it's a block party. Um, the, 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 Competitive gaming has two aspects. There's the actual competitive gaming yourself, when you're the competitor, and there's the spectating. Um, our, our game truck has five 4K HDR television screens on the inside that are all multicasted to, the, to a 70 inch TV screen on the outside, so that when myself is playing a competitive match, our good friends can stand outside the truck, drink a beer, eat a hot dog, and enjoy it without standing over me. Um, but the biggest market is going to be uh, those social media shares, as well as when you book your, your son's 16th birthday party, we mail you 30 postcards that have all of our important information on there. So that all you have to do is put your son's name on there, your location, the date, and how to RSVP on to you, and you mail it out. And that gets our information right back into the hands of our customers, because you're only going to mail it to individuals who are interested in the same type of business. So we mail 30, because at any given time, we can have at least up to 24 players playing a game within our game truck. So we mail you 30 of them, and if you ever need more, we don't mind mailing you out more. That's great. Thank you. No problem. Uh, no, great, uh, great concept. So um, I see Twitch up there. Um, uh, are you all using Twitch in any kind of uh, uh, kind of creative ways for marketing or customer acquisition, or you know whether it's a uh, allowing the people playing to stream their games or you know, Facebook Live their games and tag people, uh, things like that. So I was just wondering from the marketing perspective how those are integrated. So we have three streamers um, because that same video content is going to go to Twitch, it's going to go to YouTube as well, um, that are procuring content for us. We uh, actually supply them with Elgato video cards so that they can uh, do what they're already doing at home, enjoying their game and then capturing the content and then we just water wash the video with our logo and then we'll upload it to our social media. We haven't used it in any financial gaining marketing yet just because a lot of companies uh, require you to have a certain amount of following first so that, so that they know that if they're gonna cut a check to you, you're impacting, a, you're reaching and impacting a, a, a large quantity of individuals. And since we just opened in September, we're still building our following. Um, the hardest thing to do is get somebody to hit the follow button or the subscribe button. Um, people will share, compliment you, and say all those good things, but hitting, getting that, that follow button is, is pretty difficult. Um, so right now we're just procuring that, that, uh, that content so that when we start our events in April, we can flood our social media with constant uh, content, whether it's gameplay, tournaments, and all, of, and all of those type of things. All right, we're gonna open it up to audience questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. I'll actually start it off uh, by saying congratulations by the baby that's on the way. Thank you. Uh, March birthdays are awesome, just speaking from experience. So um, in terms of the truck itself, the concept, you built it out, you basically constructed everything. What, I guess, what features do you wish you would have added? What improvements would you make if you have you know, an additional trailer? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, about just the user experience of the trailer itself? Yeah, so video game trunks are not a new concept. Um, we just took the best of what is already out there. There was definitely no reason for us to recreate the wheel. We just wanted to improve it. Instead of making a regular tire, make it an all-season tire. Uh, so we took um, what we could find out in the nation um, on other individuals and, and looked at what they were struggling with. Um, and we, uh, so I actually come from a technology background. I uh, am a technical specialist for the Fed. Um, and the biggest thing that uh, an individual wants is innovation. Um, we all have PlayStation, we all have Xboxes, but we want to know how can we improve that experience. Um, I, if I would, if I could go back six or seven months and start this process over, I wouldn't change a thing. 
because um, it's, it's going to be the same. Um, Technology is still going to be at the same point, and you and I are still going to enjoy the exact same things, which is enjoying video games together. Um, finance, from a financial aspect, I wouldn't have bought a ton of video games. I would have probably uh, sat down and found out what you all really want to play, but I was new, and um, all mistakes aren't bad. Uh, some of them are, are worth learning about, because it's going to be those times where individuals like yourself asking these questions, like, what would you change? Um, and if I can pour into anybody, I'd be, I'm more than happy to say, hey, don't spend $2,000 in video games. Just find out what, what your, your demographic wants to play and just buy those. But I wouldn't change a thing. Um, this has been fun. Uh, no one doesn't like games. Um, so I would do exactly the same. I've met some wonderful people in this uh, short amount of time. Question in the back. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thanks for having so, me. So how much do your services cost when we're booked for, for private parties, um, we charge the same rate whether it's a birthday party or it's a wedding. Uh, we have a two hour minimum and it's $330 and then every additional hour after that is $100. And if you want to add on a virtual reality experience for your party, it's $50 per hour. That's it. We have a question over here. Yeah, um, really good presentation. I was going to ask um, a question kind of from a personal experience. I've been to, uh, I was at the Sneak Fest when you guys were there, and then I was at the, uh, the, the, the block party, the May block party. I have a photo of you from Sneak Fest. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that under wraps, but, um, <laughs> but no, um, the reason I'm asking, because both nights, both nights I had actually events um, a, few, a few hours prior, I mean, I mean not prior, but after, um, and so I was wondering, are you guys looking to um, either expand, or do you do more than one event a day? Um, and if, if so, is that possible with, you know, obviously cleaning up the, the, the bus and getting it um, equipped? Um, so basically, I'm asking, I guess, what is your, what is going forward, what is your plan to, to maybe tap into more than one event a day? So in a perfect world, we can uh, service three events in a day. Um, our generator can run for eight hours without taking a breath. Um, so... Um, we went with all child safe, easy clean in, uh, materials from vinyl seats to rubber mats. So when cleaning, I just had to take a broom and take six swipes down the road and we're ready to go. For so long as it's dry material, we don't allow any food or drink on the trailer so that um, the only real mess that we, that's ever brought on the truck is the dust from your shoes. Maybe the, the sweat from like someone losing a game, but mostly just dust from your shoes. Um, for expansion, uh, my, our next phase is going to be open up a network gaming center um, so we can service uh, individuals who play PC gaming. There really isn't a way to, to tend to PC gaming on a, on a mobile unit because you, you, you usually don't have a dedicated live internet feed um, that, can, that has enough bandwidth to service that type of data going up and down. Um, but PC gamers are the, the largest uh, portion of the market. Uh, we do plan to open a network gaming center in a year's time from our launch date, which will be this, this September, right here in the core of the Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Kansas City, Missouri, part of the greater Kansas City area. Um, I come from a technical background. My wife comes from academia. Uh, so during the day, she will host uh, professional development classes for young ladies. Um, sorry, fellas, but there is a, there is a, tr tr a tremendous need for a safe place for young ladies to go that they can uh, develop themselves academically and socially and emotionally. And she will mentor students from their freshman year of high school until they transition by aligning them with, with women that are uh, in the STEM, in the STEM uh, career field so that, because uh, in reality, getting into college uh, generally starts your freshman year. By the time you get to your junior or senior year, you're already applying yourself. So she'll want to grab them at their freshman year and uh, follow them along and provide them with mentors. Myself, um, I will continue to do what, what my passion is, uh, which is going to be making things that power on work, um, as well as gaming. So that same computer can be used for, those, for both aspects, whether you're building a resume or you're playing an online, uh, online video game. Um, you just switch an account and it services both individuals. Question in the back. Good morning and congratulations on your um, service here. I was just wondering, because I'm not a gamer, so when you set up at public events, how do you choose like which game? Does it change like every two hours? Or 
do you have like a set schedule saying for this time we'll be playing this game? I'm just curious how that works. So if we're booked for a private event, um, we usually inquire from the individual who is booking what game they want to attend, what, they, what game they would like us to tailor to. We keep all of the AAA titles like Madden, 2K, FIFA, and then the fighter games. Um, when we start our first Friday Frenzy events, we will tailor to two games at once. Uh, since we have four television screens that, that will Four 4K television screens, we will have one game on Xbox and PlayStation, then another game on Xbox and PlayStation, and then we'll do King of the Hill style tournaments where the winner stays on and the loser comes off, and then folks just file in. That way the community, everyone feels like they're playing against each other, um, trying to dethrone the, the King of the Hill. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, switch them every first Friday. Um, we do, we are aligned with, uh, with, game stop, with two game stops in the Overland Park area. Uh, and they actually access, they actually require from us what game to play for the event. So um, it's, it's a community-based decision. Um, whether our following says, hey, we wanna play this at the next meetup, or we just host a tournament based off of who's booking us. Question on your left. How you doing? Good, man. <laughs> I'm smiling, man, because this is amazing. Um, I came, well, I come all the time, but I came because I did see that you were presenting today. Never really looked at the truck itself, but it's pretty awesome. I think everybody here can say the same thing. <laughs> what I do see is that, um, and this is something we can talk about, but this would be more awesome if someone like myself was able to have the accessibility to get in there and play as well. Um, I do a lot of things in trying to change the, the mindset of, you know, people with disabilities being able to come into and be a part of things like this. And I would love to host the event and have you there, but the problem would be we have people like in wheelchairs being able to, you know, access that type of space. The fact that you guys have just started up, I think it's just an amazing thing that we can brainstorm and talk about because like you said, this is a new concept and you guys are changing the game and it's great that you're doing it in Kansas City. So just wanted to throw that out there to you. And like I said, we can connect and talk a little bit more, but this will be awesome for all communities. Thank you. So I actually know exactly who you are and I appreciate you showing up. Um, I think what you're doing in the community is phenomenal as well um, to, impact, to impact individuals. I actually read your, your article that was released with Starland News, which I think is great. If you guys haven't seen it, look at this article. It's heartfelt and, and wonderful. Um, so the very back of our trailer, what you're look, the, the vantage point you're looking through is actually two uh, huge doors. Um, and we're, our, the individuals who fabricated the truck for us are actually building our ramp for us now. When you purchase the truck, you can either, you can either uh, purchase swinging style doors or you can purchase a, a large ramp. The large ramp is eight feet long, so we, we're already at 50 foot stop. Um, so we are actually having a ramp built that we can fold up and, and remove. This space between the, the bar here and the seat is actually five and a half feet wide. And we, and we had them do it that way so that we can accommodate individuals who have, who have um, a disability and, and need to have that space to, uh, that, that amount of space to get on. Um, cause I do come from a, from a community where I do have some colleagues who have those, uh, those same type of disadvantages um, in life and we wanted to make sure we could accommodate to them as well. But yeah, we can definitely uh, sit down and talk about something. Um, this, although my wife and my are the business owner, this business isn't for us, it's generally for the community. Um, so yeah, we can definitely get together and see how we can work in the future. Question up front from the experts. Um, all right, so it, it sounds uh, really great, and I think a lot of it will spread off word of mouth, but it was, at the same time, I, I'm sitting here, like it would be great if there was a way to really accelerate that word of mouth process. So I guess uh, one of my questions is, if you have, have thought of ways to encourage people to like do live streaming through their social media while they're playing to get people to almost root for them or if you know there's other models for encouraging people to use it entrepreneurially or for fundraisers or you know things like that yes um the difficult part with live streaming um that, that we found as a struggle is uh if we're using a pc as our as our, our as our means of capturing the content um 
we got to add on another power, power source as well as a live internet connection. We do encourage our social media, our social media and streaming uh, influencers and contributors to go live at our events and then tag our tag our uh, our company, which we have a, have have we have had quite a few individuals do that. Um, I do own a four to one uh, capture card, uh, but it's a it's a thousand dollar project to build a PC that uh, can accommodate pulling in four. 4K, HDMI, 4K HDR inputs and be able to process that kind of content. Um, but until enough individuals book us, <laughs> that $1,000 project isn't going to come to a rotation. Um, but it is something that I do plan um, to complete before we really get into the, the most enjoyable part of this summer. Um, but yeah. Uh, last question for me. When you're talking about power, just because I know all about generators, <laughs> festivals, um, are you able, do you solely have to run on your generator? Or if the facility has the capability, are you able to plug in and pull power, more power from their source then? And I'm only thinking this because there's larger festivals that come into town, um, and I don't use my generator power for that. I'm able to get power from them that exceeds what I actually have on my truck and run more, longer, safer, and not run up hours on my generator. Yeah, so if you can see, it's kind of small. Um, this point here, this, there's a 50 amp plug-in. That plug-in actually plugs into the front of our generator at the, at the beginning of the event that we are fueling the power. Um, at our grand opening, we did it inside of Municipal Auditorium, which won't allow for those kind of emissions. Um, so yes, we do have the ability to plug into uh, the facility's power for so long that it's within a 25 foot range of the nose of our trailer. All right, final question. What can we as a community do to help you? Come out and enjoy. Come out, pick up a controller, um, laugh, fun, high five, laugh at pe people. Just have a good time. Um, that's really it. People like me want to meet people like you. Um, I'm a hugger, so if you come up to me, I'm definitely going to hug you. So, <laughs> fair warning. Um, but just come out and enjoy. Uh, there's really nothing else outside of that. Unless you guys want to, you know, dig in your, get deep in your pockets and give me a million dollars, that I will take too. Um, but outside of that, just come out and enjoy. Oh, and like us on Facebook so that we can reach more people. All right, thanks very much for being here. That's it for this week. Both our presenters are going to be hanging out afterwards. If you uh, would like to talk to them, they'll be hanging out, I believe, over here somewhere. Uh, for next week, we have uh, Exhale KC, and we are rap presenting in the morning. Don't forget, uh, we're having a special One Million Cups in the evening starting at 6 p.m., where we're going to have a presenter, uh, an alumni panel, and a black-owned small business fair. We hope to see you all there, and uh, everybody drive safe. Thank you.